Let's move on to the 3A sectionals, and we're talking about some pretty good matchups, especially when you want to talk about Harding at Eastbrook and Belmont at Heritage. Harding obviously got tested last week against Clay Feaster and Norwell, and Eastbrook beat a very good Leo team at their place. What do you see in this matchup between Harding and Eastbrook that could be a determining factor? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if either team won. Both are very, very good teams. But here's the stat that really stuns me is the fact that uh, Leo rushed for 241 yards against the Eastbrook defense, which I thought was going to be a dominant defense that would shut down any rushing attack. And if Leo can get 241 against him, then my goodness, what can Rod Smith do against him? So I'm, uh, prior to Friday night, I would have said, hey, Eastbrook's a better team than Harding, and, and they'll get them, but now I'm not so sure. I wouldn't be shocked if Harding goes down there and runs the ball successfully as they put uh, Rod Smith in the Wildcat formation and snap the ball to him considerably against Norwell. I wouldn't be shocked at all if Harding goes down there and gets a win. That was my next question. They're calling uh, their version of the Wildcat the Gator offense because Sherwood Haydock kind of... Whatever pick, you want to call it. Exactly. Kind thing. of picked it off from uh, Tim Tebow in Florida. It's and what the Rod do Smith offense is what it is. The, the Smith offense. Yeah. Maybe they should call it the Buckeye offense. There you go. Uh, but... How dangerous does that make them? Because I've seen them run it in spots throughout the season and not successfully all the time, but it seemed like against a good Norwell team that's defense was really underrated, they were able to run it effectively, Smith going for 294 and four touches. Well, I'm really surprised at how successful teams are that really run the Wildcat to a great degree because you know what's coming, but the misdirection and the gap integrity that the defenses have to have is imperative, and a lot of times high school kids can't do that. In fact, at the college level even, Ball State implemented the, implemented the Wildcat this past weekend and ran for almost 600 yards against Eastern East Michigan. So it's a tough defense or a tough offense to defend, and uh, the teams that are that are sticking with it and doing it well are having success. So don't be surprised if Harding just snaps a ball to Rod Smith and says carry us to a win. Hey, he could do it. And a team that's put their most, uh, or I should say, their best athlete basically getting the, the, the snap out of the shotgun is Belmont. They've started to do it the past few weeks with Nick Hall, the reigning 3A state MVP. He had 203 yards in the first round game. They've got heritage. How dangerous is Belmont now that they're in the playoffs playing schools their size and running an offense that seems to be clicking on all cylinders with that, uh, I guess, Wildcat offense. Well, it is. And the thing that makes Belmont so difficult is they have multiple guys that can step in and, and hurt you. And so it's not like a, a Harding or a Norwell that really just relied on one main runner. They can snap it to a number of different guys and hurt you. But here's what helps Heritage in this game is they have come off two straight weeks of playing really, really difficult games, mm -hmm. and, and they found ways to win those games, once against Garrett, once against Concordia. And so they're kind of a battle-tested team. And don't underestimate how important that is once you get into the tournament. There's two minutes to go. It's a two-point game, three-point game. One team's going to get rattled. The other team's not. Obviously, Heritage has shown over the last couple of weeks they are not going to get rattled if it's a close game late. I know you like Steve Snodgrass's team when the season began, and they, yep. have, not, uh, they have not disappointed. They've been pretty good all season long. Let's take a look at some of the matchups in 2A football. Uh, you've got Garrett on the road, Central Noble at Fairfield, Madison Grants at Winchester, and then uh, a game really we want to take a look at is Eastern at Bishop Lures. Um, there was a question, would an average SAC team, how would they fare against a very good uh, Three Rivers Conference team last week at 8-1 and one Manchester, and, and we got the result as Bishop yeah. Lures put up 45 points. Uh, is this just a case of Bishop Lures finally getting a chance to play against schools their size? Exactly. There was never any question in my mind. For once in my life, I was right about something. <laughs> I knew Bishop Lures was going to go over to Manchester and take care of them. The Three Rivers Conference that Manchester played in is not the SAC, and neither is the Mid-Indiana Conference, and Eastern's going to find that out about five minutes into this game, that they ain't playing McConaughey this week. Uh, Bishop Lures is a very balanced team. They can pass some. They can run some. Their defense is solid. And, yes, they are finally playing schools their size and not Snyder and Dwanger and Southside. And so that's why you're seeing them have so much success. Uh, I, I would be absolutely stunned if Lures doesn't win this game. Do you see basically Matt and Lindsay kind of flipping the switch on these guys, or is it a case of, uh, they don't really need to be motivated now that they know that it's the playoffs. Well, they need to be motivated. It's the playoffs, and you're one and done. And so I don't think that's going to be a problem. I, I think that Coach Lindsay has just continued to work with these guys. They've continued to battle through some challenges, uh, like playing the tougher teams. And now with each week that they have success, they will get more and more confident, and they know that they can do it. Plus, these Lures kids, I mean, a lot of them play multiple sports. They, they win state championships in other sports. They've won state championships in football before. These are champion kids. 
kids. These are not kids that are going to be worried if they go up against Eastern or Manchester. I want to ask you a question down the road because looking at that bracket, um, you know, Garrett's had a good season and things like that. But when you see Lures, do you see them as not only maybe an eventual sectional champ, but also moving on past that through regionals? Uh, yes. I, I, it'll depend on who they play in the regionals. But in the sectional, none, needless to say, I think that they are the dominant team. Garrett, um, quite frankly, has had the easiest sectional draw of any team in the state. They opened with Woodland, and they have Bremen this week. So they'll continue to advance just because they have an easy draw. But uh, Lures, uh, I, I don't think that anybody can touch them in this sectional. All right, let's move on to 1A matchups this coming week. Adam Central at Southwood is an interesting one, and Fremont at Southern Wells. Um, I guess Southern Wells is kind of in the same respect uh, out of Bishop Lewis is now that they are playing schools a little more their size. Uh, we're going to see them uh, probably play pretty well on Friday nights as they did this past week. And Adam Central at Southwood, I didn't. Th I thought that was Busco's sectional to win, and they get bounced by Adam Central in the first round. We both thought it was going to be Busco Southern Wells, but uh, you know that's why they play the game. Uh, the impressive thing about Adam Central, because really they gave no indication this year that they were capable of doing what they did last Friday night. They dig themselves a 16 nothing hole at Busco and end up scoring 20 unanswered points to win the game. Just stunning, but give them credit. Give their first-year coach credit. And uh, now they have the confidence that it doesn't matter who they play, be it Southern Wells or whoever, they're capable of beating the, uh, a team on a given night. Now, having said that, I think Southern Wells is the best team left in this league. And you're right, it does help them. They play bigger schools all season long. Sometimes it doesn't help in the win-loss column, but once it gets to tournament play, that certainly helps you a lot. But, you know, Southern Wells is 8-2, so it didn't really hurt them that much. So you see Southern Wells uh, perhaps in the long term uh, winning this section. Yes, I do. And uh, they're so balanced. They had three guys that rushed for substantial yards last week and they had three guys that scored touchdowns for them so pick your poison with those guys it's a lot like Belmont they have multiple guys who can do it and so uh, Southern Wells I, I look to win that sectional all right so we'll see if those picks pan out this coming Friday night in the second, second round of sectional play he's Tom Davis from the new Sentinel I'm Glenn Marini and thanks for logging on to Wayne.com